Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a review of the Canon 70-200 2.8RF LIS lens. Now I will be putting it up against the 70-200 2.8 version 3 LIS in terms of functions and features, but this is pretty close to a real world review because later on in this review, I will be going through sample images that were taken in concert situations, as well as a college football game between Temple University and I believe the Connecticut Huskies, which was held where the Eagles play at Lincoln Financial Field. So this lens right here basically completes the Hebrew Trinity from Canon. You've got the 15 to 35 2.8, the 24 to 70 2.8, and now the 70 to 200 2.8 that is right here. Now this is a much smaller lens than the 70 to 200 2.8 version three. You can see that right here that it's much more compact. This one is two inches shorter than this one when it doesn't have the adapter on it. Now the reason I have the EF adapter on here is because we're talking about these lenses being used on the Canon EOS R or the EOS RP. So what are the pros to this lens being shorter? Well, it fits in your bag much easier. It's lighter, I'll get to the weights in just a second, but look how much smaller it is. It loses that two inches of length, but it gains a lot of girth. Now, you guys let me know, would you rather have more girth or more length? Let me know down in the comments below. I know what I prefer. Now, since we're talking about length and girth, let's flip this one over, take the lens hood off just for a second and extend it all the way out. You twist right here, you extend it out. Let's take this one off. Lens hood off, put it right here, extend it out. Oh yeah, it's already extended out. With the adapter on there, you can see that the RF version is shorter. But is it a problem that this lens isn't internal zooming? Would you rather have it be smaller and more compact and zoom like this versus this? I like the fact that it's smaller in my bag. When it's in my bag, it's not gonna fall over, meaning my bag likes to fall over when this lens is in it because look how much longer it is when you have this adapter on it. So is this lens a problem that it sticks out? Will it compress? When, oh, it does, but I have to take some force to press it down and it actually moves. Some people think that this will be an issue in the long run with the environmental ceiling. Do I think it's a big deal? No, not really. They have other lenses that have done this for years, and I rather have the smaller and more compact lens than a bigger, heavier option. Speaking of weight, this one weighs in at 2.35 pounds, whereas the older one weighs in at 3.3 pounds without the adapter on it. It's a quarter pound more with the adapter. Now, for all of you people playing at home who like to hear about grams, this lens weighs 1,070 grams, whereas the older one weighs 1,480 grams. Grams. Now, since this is in my hands, let's show you around the lens. You have a 77 millimeter filter thread on this, which means you have a 77 millimeter cap right here. You've got on the side, you have a lock button. You can lock it in so it will not twist or turn or extend when it's in your bag. Around this side, you have a bunch of different switches, full to infinity. You have AF to MF. You've got stabilization on or off and three different modes of stabilization. Speaking of stabilization, you have five stops of image stabilization in the new RF lens versus three and a half in the older EF lens. Now this comes in handy being that currently the EOS R and the EOS RP does not have IBIS in the camera. Moving around to the back of the lens, you still have this really crappy cap that you have to line up this notch with this red line right here in order to get it on, which means you kind of have to be looking at it to put it on. And there's so many times when it's in my bag and I'm like, oh, 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 I dropped the lens, the back cap because it won't go on. You have to get that perfect. I wish you could put it on many different ways like you can do with other camera manufacturers, 
Sony does not do that. Theirs actually sucks as well. I hate their caps more than anything because it's a leftover from the Minolta days. Right here is your control ring. This is another thing that I turn off because I don't like accidentally hitting it. And for anybody telling me in the comments that Jared, you can activate it when you press the shutter halfway down, I don't care. I don't need this to change my aperture. I don't need this to change my shutter speed. I don't need it to change the ISO. That's my personal choice. If you want to use it, then go ahead and use it. That's perfectly fine. No problems there. Now here's something that if I ever see you using it on a sideline or anywhere, I will probably come up to you and say, hey, why are you using this? And I'm talking about the lens collar. There is absolutely no reason for you to be using this lens collar on this lens because it's so small and so short and so light, you do not need to use a monopod. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there who don't have as much strength in their hands and they need a monopod. I will not yell at you. I will just look at you knowingly and be like, why are you using that? I won't really do that. I'm just really making a joke right there. You don't need this. I take this off as soon as I get it, put it back in the box for when I sell the lens or trade it in so I know where it is when it's time to do that. Now here's another reason some people may leave the lens collar on if you're using a black rapid strap and you wanna get the weight onto the lens and it's more balanced on your hip versus having it on the body. I actually rather have it on the body because what happens when I wanna change lenses, I then have to unclip from the lens and no longer have the carabiner on the bottom of the body. So that's another reason I don't use this and still just attach it to the camera body when I need to put a strap on, strap on. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that the images you're seeing on the screen right now were taken with this 70 to 200 RF and edited using FroPak 2. If you're looking for a great starting point or want to speed up your raw workflow, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash FroPak 2. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide you like them, you can pick them up right now on sale. Or if you haven't picked up FroPak 1, you can get the FroPak Pack bundle with Fro Pack 1 and Fro Pack 2 for a bigger discount. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, if you've seen a lot of my reviews, you know I hate that the new Nikon 70 to 200 2.8 move the zoom ring to the outside and the focus ring to the inside. Now, Canon did the exact same thing. The focus ring is now here with the zoom ring on the outside. But look at this. You see how close it is to where the old zoom ring is on the old lens? This is not a problem at all. I love where they have it. It's much better than what Nikon did. So I'm perfectly fine where they moved the zoom ring to. Now, what I'm not happy with is the fact that I need to turn this extra far in terms of the throw from going to 70 to 200. I can't just move my thumb and get from one to the other. I need to twist and twist again. Whereas with the older lens, I can sit here and go 70 to 200 with just my thumb twisting like this. I cannot do that any longer with the new 70 to 200. If I try to do that, I can get it to 135 and shit, I lost it. My finger slipped off the rubber to get to 200. It's much harder to do that. So it's going to take more mental power to remember I've got to twist this further and you may end up missing some things. But that extra turn may be the difference between you getting the framing that you want and getting the framing that you don't want. With that being said, Sony has done a great job with their lens as well. Their throw is super short, same thing. Thumb, thumb, doom, doom, super short. So that's one thing that I don't like about this RF 70 to 200. Now let's move on to the lens hood. We now have a hood that is no longer black. It is completely white. It's also shaped much better. It's not this pedal looking thing. It's fully round. It's also much larger on the front of the lens. Now they made it larger so that you can put on a filter that's larger than 77 millimeters. For example, where is my filter? Hey, there's my Peter McKinnon filter right here. We have an 82 millimeter Peter McKinnon filter that is an ND filter and we have a step up, no, that would be a step down ring, right? Yeah, step down, 82 to 77. That would go on this lens. 
Let me show you something. There's a door right here. This door on this lens allows you to change the ND filter or a circular polarizer with the lens hood on. You can't do that with a lot of other lenses. Now you would think, Stephen pointed this out to me, that you would be able to take off this hood, put the filter on there, and then put the hood back on. Well, actually that didn't work with the 82 millimeter. You have to put the hood on and then somehow, somehow get your fingers in here to put on an 82 millimeter filter. But if all you have are 77 millimeter filters, you can take the hood off, put the filter on and then put the hood on. Is that a deal breaker? No, it's actually a nice feature to have that you have this door up here for people that are looking for that. Now in just a minute, I will be getting to the sample images, but there's a lot to talk about with this lens. You have dual USM motors. Sony seems to make a big deal out of their motors, saying that their motors are the best. They're like, our motors are the best. Everybody else's sucks. And it's like, well, not really. Nikon has perfectly good dual motors and Canon has good motors. The autofocus in this lens is so fast, it's not even funny. You don't even see it working. Now, another thing in this lens and a difference between the RF version and the version three right here is that this has nine blade aperture and this one has an eight blade aperture. And I don't care about how many blades the freaking aperture has. This is a great lens. This is a great lens. Nobody's ever looked at my picture and said, did you only have eight blades? Because I can see the difference between eight blades and nine blades. No, no, you probably can't. And all I really wanna say is please just go take pictures. Get a good picture. Nobody really cares about this other shit. Now, let's get into the photos. The first image we have right here was taken by Steven at a concert for AJR. Now, before I get into the exact settings for that, I do want to remind you that you can download sample raw DNG files that were taken with this RF 70 to 200 2.8, so you can pixel peep them to your heart's content. And if that's what you like doing, more power to you. I don't like pixel peeping, but this is a review. So let's look at some pixels. Let's zoom in on this one. This one was taken at 1 640th of a second F 2.8 ISO 2500. Nice lighting, super sharp. Look at the eyeball here. Steven did not have on the IAF. He just moved the focusing point to the eye and nailed it really well. That's out at 200 millimeters. Now, Steven, why were you at 1 640th at F 2.8 250th of a second to shoot a concert? Those are terrible sets. Settings. Now let's look at the next photo. This one was taken by me at 1 640th at f2.8 at 2500 ISO. Same settings. Good job, Steven. Good job shooting a concert. So I shot Matt and Kim with the worst LED lighting that there could be, meaning it's super bright LEDs. They're massive and overpowering. Look here in the bottom corner, you can see a little bit of flickering going on. That's not a problem with the lens. That is that the body was picking up the flickering of the LED lights. The colors, the tones, the sharpness is gorgeous. It looks like I have more grain than Steven had grain and I'm not sure why. Maybe I was off with my exposure from the EVF when I was shooting it, but this file looks nice and clean. Let me cut in here real quick and say that this video is brought to you by Square. Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I use for jaredpone.com because it's simple, easy, affordable, and you don't need to know coding. To get a 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Moving on to the next thing, this is when I went and photographed Temple University football. It was at Lincoln Financial Field. It was actually pretty cool to go into the press room where all of the photographers are, as well as walk out underneath the stadium to come out onto the field. What was funny is they had some music going on. You know how players enter and they do their dances and stuff like that? Well, the two security guards were standing there and I come walking out like this. I'm probably out of focus, but that's okay. I, I, I come walking into, out of the tunnel, into the light, and I'm like, You know, I was like dancing to the music because I'm like, they have entry, entry music, I have entry music, 
as a photographer. And then they're like, shut up and take pictures. I was like, all right, whatever. Since I was there early, two hours before the game, there was warm-ups going on, which gave me a great chance to get some sample photos with the 70 to 200 2.8. Now, being that the Canon doesn't let me record the EVF with one of my Atomos recorders, I have the GoPro on top of the camera so you can see what I see. I actually think it's pretty cool that you can watch as the lens zooms in and out with the GoPro. So that's pretty cool. This first image right here, we, we have super nice contrast, super nice color and tones, really sharp out at 200 millimeters. What are my settings? One 1250th of a second at f2.8 at ISO 200. It's a shame that it wasn't nice for the entire game. Uh, it was overcast when the game started, so it was darker, but I love the contrast and the tones. The reason I put this one in here is I'm at 108 millimeters, and look at how obliterated the background is. Uh, the players like to turn and see the cameras and flash some signs, so I figure I'll take a picture. I'm like, nailed it, I got it. I'm sure that's what he wanted. Too bad I wasn't shooting silent, because then he'd be like, are you shooting? I'm like, yeah, I'm taking pictures. But anyway, super sharp, really nice in focus on the face. I did not use IAF in this situation either. I got really good with the EOS R, moving the focusing points with my finger, and it just seems that it's so sharp and, and, and so fast with autofocus that it's, it's really enjoyable to shoot with, the autofocus. Not so much the camera. The camera's fine, it's just slow at its three or five frames a second. It's not ideal in the sports world. Now, moving on to the next image, right before the game started, we went out onto the field. Uh, this was one of Temple University's student photographers, and I was just testing photos out. This is at 70 millimeters. By the way, you can get within 2.3 feet for close focusing on this lens. That's really close, and that just will help you with portraits. I think that this is a fantastic portrait lens. If you don't have an 85-1.2 or the 50-1.2 because they're a little more expensive and you're just starting out with the EOS R or the RP and you want to get RF glass, a 24-70 2.8 and this 70-200 is going to be ideal for a while. This is great for portraits, great for weddings, great for just about anything you can think about. This is a staple lens that should be in every photographer's bag. But look how we zoom in on this. I'm at four, uh, 640 ISO now at 1 2,000th of a second. Look how sharp the eyeball is. If there's one compliment that I can give the EOS R, it's the fact that it has the same sensor as the 5D Mark IV. It's a fantastic sensor. So you're, you know what results you're gonna get from it, and now when you put on awesome RF glass, you get even better results. Just look how obliterated the background is at 70 millimeters. Beautiful, sharp, nice tones and nice colors. This is just a simple photo of the players running towards you. Too bad somebody, they, they, they peel off before they hit you. I was hoping that I would be like run over. I really wasn't hoping that I would be run over, but this, this was great, getting the guys running out onto the field at 70 millimeters. Are you looking to buy new or used gear? Well, if so, check out allenscamera.com. They're a mom and pop store that's been around for over 40 years and they support me, so I support them. So go to allenscamera.com or give them a call and don't forget to tell them that the fro sent you. Moving on to game action, I switched off of being able to move the focusing points because I was shooting with the Sony A9 as well as the Sony 402.8 on a monopod. So that's in my left hand. And then on my right hip, I had my black rapid strap with the 70 to 200 from Canon and I could pull it up with one hand and shoot. But because I couldn't move the focusing points, I put on the auto focus, the one that selects the best autofocusing point for me, so basically full auto in autofocus, and it did a very good job for the most part. It sometimes missed and, and focused on a closer subject, but in this situation, it was perfect for getting the quarterback. 70 to 200 is not an ideal football lens unless they get closer to you or are on that side of the field that you're on. So this, you know, I would like it to be a little tighter, but at 200 millimeters, it's, it's very good because you've got the, the, the players converging, trying to sack the quarterback, and the quarterback is throwing. What I will tell you again is that three or five frames a second that you get out of this camera is uber slow, especially when it comes to shooting sports. We're hoping that Canon will hear everybody's complaints and please come out with a professional, high-end mirrorless camera because you've created great glass. You just don't have the body just yet, but very happy with that image. Walked behind the players as I was going from one side of the field to the other, and I figured let's get some bench shots. You can see the separation from Miglocklo. 
59, number 59, I guess that's his name. And here's the coach right here. Nice and sharp, nice and in focus, nice colors and nice tones. I can't say enough good things about this lens. This is beautiful. Um, and again, the EOS R isn't a bad camera. It's just not perfect. Last image right here. This is one of Temple University's photographers. This guy is really good. He does crop a lot of his sports shots. I did do a critique of his photos. He has some great photos. He was on the sideline and I wanted to get some portraits of him. And here we go, zooming in on the eyeball. I'm at 1250 ISO, 1 800th of a second at f2.8. The eye is nice and sharp. I moved the focusing point myself. Didn't use IAF. We don't see purple fringing around his hat even though there's bright ass lights behind him. Steven did point out to me that if you zoom in far enough, you do see some of this other color fringing from those bright ass lights up there at Lincoln Financial Field. That stuff never bothered me. I don't worry about it. I just care about the subject. Are they sharp? Are they in focus? Are the tones and colors great? And I'm really happy with the images I was able to capture with this lens. So how much is this lens? It's $26.99, and it's very similar to the price of Sony 70 to 200, and this one is on the RF, so it's for mirrorless. But the, the 70 to 200 2.8 version 3 EF comes in at $1,800. What's funny is when we check the pricing of the version two, that's up to $2,100. So why would you buy version two when you can get version three? Now that's $1,800 for the lens only. If you want to adapt it, you need a $99 adapter to adapt it to the EOS R or the RP. Which one should you go with? Should you go with the RF? Should you go with the, the EF? Or if you have the EF, do you need to get the RF? Well, it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more compact, it fits in the bag much easier. If you're a professional photographer, I sell this lens if you can, and I dump it into the RF version. If you're just an everyday shooter, just use the adapter. This is a fast focusing lens even with the adapter. It's a tremendous piece of glass. For me as a, a, a professional and a traveling photographer, if I'm shooting Canon, I'm taking the RF all day because it's smaller, it's lighter, it takes up less space in the bag, it's super sharp, it's a really nice lens, and you can't go wrong with it. Canon has knocked it out of the park with all of their RF glass, and I will say it a million times until it comes true or I am proven wrong. Canon is the sleeper of the bunch. They've spent years, and by years I mean like two years, getting all of this RF glass out into the world. They started with the best of the best with Honor Sir, opposed to what Nikon's done, and then took Sony a while to get there, but Sony has a lot of glass. But they don't have an 85-1-2. They don't have a 50-1-2. They don't have a 35-1-2, which is probably in the works, and they certainly don't have a 28-70 to F2. So I know this is a long video. Don't forget you can download the sample RAW files, but I love this lens. If there was one lens I was starting with and I was shooting sports, I would buy this lens. If you're shooting portraits, I would buy this lens. If you're doing weddings, anything run and gun, if you're doing photojournalistic work, this is a staple lens and I gotta commend Canon on doing a fantastic job. It's priced at $26.99, so it's a little more expensive than this bad boy and by a little I mean like 800 bucks, but still, for working professionals, this is an awesome option. So let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.